Hello everyone and welcome back. Now I'm really excited for this replay because my friend here, Jay's 316, has a nearly perfect execution on his Naginata core. I mean, if you run in a Naginata, Naginata army, this is how you do it. So I'm really excited for this battle. Alright, let's take a look at the setup. We have four Naginata Samurai forming the front line. Back here we have a Naginata Warrior Monk and a Nodachi Samurai. They'll be here on reserve. And then uh, three Bow Ashigarus and a Matchlock Ashigaru. And then two Yari Cavalry. Over here on the other side, uh, this guy's core is a little harder to pick out. He's got the uh, two Yari Samurai, two Yari Ashigaru, two Nodachi Samurais, and then three Katanas. His range complement is two Bow Samurai and a Bow Ashigaru, and then he has two Yari Cavalry over here. So uh, for this guy's core, it's hard to say what it is. Um, I, I might say it's a Nodachi core. Because he's got these good solid units to hold people down. Um, a kind of army you want to flank around and hit the backs. He's got the cavalry too. Um, since he doesn't have a whole lot of cavalry, um, they might just be there for support. I might call this a Nodachi core, but uh, again, uh, it's pretty hard to say. So anyway, let's get started. Like I said, JH has a pretty much perfect battle here. If you're going to attack with a Naginata army, this is going to be how you do it. So let's see what he does. Uh, he's just going to move up here to the workshop. Nobody takes it because it's right in the middle of the map. Um, moving up early will cut the enemy off from it, so he's not going to get it. Now the other guy is going to be hiding his cavalry over here. They'll make an appearance kind of later. They'll move up way on the flank of this army. And so we have the movement here. Um, talk about ranged advantage real quick. Uh, it's three versus three. Um, even though both samurai are high, higher quality, uh, they aren't really that much of an advantage. I mean, they have 90 men as opposed to 120. Uh, in skirmishing, a bow samurai and a bow ashigaru will do about the same amount of damage to each other, so no one has a ranged advantage. So it'll come down to who's the uh, the better skirmisher, and we'll see who that's going to be. Uh, his general's moving up too. Whole army coming forward. It looks like the battle lines are going to meet fairly quickly. They might not even really skirmish, but eventually they stop, and the missing units move to the front. Now uh, let's take a look at the skirmishing situation here. Uh, the three bows are going to be meeting the three bows. But uh, look who has the cavalry ready to go. It's JH. Uh, the other guy's cavalry is way off hidden over here, so they're not going to be very relevant in this missile battle. So JH can use his cavalry well. He can really hammer the archers because he won't have any cavalry support, nothing to react quickly. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Really good aggressive move. Now he could have pressed an attack at this point, just as another option to throw out there. Because when you bring cavalry to attack missile units like this, what he usually does is just give you cover. And so you can hold down the bows in melee combat, or at least make them retreat so your guys can move up without fear of getting shot at. But uh, this is good too, I do this as well. Uh, just hit the missile units with uh, your cavalry. And they, look, who's gonna, look who he's going to send out to face the cavalry. He sends a Nodachi Samurai and bam, they're going to take some serious damage. Uh, they're going to lose about 40 men. Uh, this bow Samurai gets hit too. And this one has nothing blocking it, so this bow Samurai is down to about 60 men. So good aggressive cavalry action. Uh, and now JH has the definite range advantage because uh, his units are hurt now. This Boashigaru is down to like 80. And let's look at his ranged uh, numbers. This Boashigaru is full. This one's full. And this one's down two men. So now JH has a ranged advantage. And with his cavalry so far away, he's just going to be able to skirmish to his heart's content now. Really good move. Uh, making the enemy's missile troops uh, be at the disadvantage now. And so I don't know what he's doing. He must have just lost control of this Yari Samurai because they were moving out a little too far. They're going to take some hits. And uh, Jage is just going to pour into him with the arrows. And so uh, Jage definitely won the skirmish there. Good cavalry use. Uh, support that Naginata core and take out his support. So now his missing units are basically irrelevant. One of them is broken. The other has about 25 men and will shatter shortly. And the other one's still almost full. But uh, one versus three is not very good odds. And they're going to get poured into. And so now it's kind of on the defender to attack. No missile units. And his cavalry so far away. Uh, he's just going to be able to get ripped up by arrows, but that's when he sends in his cavalry. Uh, now this this was a bad move on his part, sending him right at the cavalry. Um, it wasn't really necessary. I don't know why he threw him away. He should have. What he should have done is recognized he had a range disadvantage, pulled the cavalry back, then used him to screen the infantry advance, charge the missiles, get them to at least retreat so they're not shooting, and then engage, and then pull your cavalry back and have them ready to hammer the, the rears and the flanks. Uh, but of course he, he doesn't do that and he throws him away, so now JH has a huge advantage, so if he can neutralize this guy's support, which he will. Again, he's using the wedge formation. Uh, I mean, the wedge formation isn't that good, look at this. 
He's going to lose only a couple yard of cavalry, and this guy's going to get obliterated. This cavalry's already down to half strength. And he's going to bring his general into the fight, too. Normally, I wouldn't suggest sending your general into a fight, but uh, here he has a pretty clear advantage and should easily win. And so now he realizes that uh, he has no choice but to just move forward with the infantry. There's nothing now that can hit his missile units. So if he had just sat there, Jage could have rained arrows down on him all day, and there's nothing he can do about it. So this Nodachi's hurt really bad. Um, he's going to lose so many Nodachis. He only has one full unit of Nodachis. That's the only thing he's going to have for flanking. And meanwhile, Jage, his cavalry, is still going to be alive and free to flank and hit from the, the rears. So this guy's at a pretty big disadvantage now. Uh, great support work to neutralize the support for the enemy. Now he's just got to hope his katanas, or his naginatas can win, which seems like a pretty workable proposition. The other guy has only two katana samurai, excuse me, three katana samurai. So uh, it looks like Jage has an infantry advantage at this point too, and with these naginata warrior monks, uh, he'll have some serious staying power, and we'll be able to hold down the infantry long enough for the nodachis and the cavalry to flank. Alright, so his cavalry is gone. Jage has won the cavalry battle and won the missile battle. All that's left is the, uh, the infantry. And if he wasn't going to hammer the flanks, at least he would have the cavalry back here to guard the general. Because with the numbers that he lost in the first charge against the missile units, uh, his cavalry wouldn't have held up if he had guarded the general. So now his general, once the infantry gets blocked down, he'll have no protection for his general whatsoever. So he's going to go straight for the general. Uh, so throwing away his cavalry was a bad move on so many fronts. Could he use it to screen the infantry, take some arrows, uh, or protect the general? Uh, one of the cavalry units is going to hit the bow samurai, good move, just get them off the field. And the rest are going to go straight for the general here. Now he brought his general up too. Uh, maybe not a good idea, I wouldn't have risked him at this point because you don't want your guys to route on mass. But uh, still, uh, not a bad move really. Um, he's going to bring his matchlocks up too, and once those get to the in a good firing position, boy it's going to be over. So here we go, cavalry is hitting the general. Good solid charge, lost about five men. And so he's just going to be hammering the general. The uh, guy in black has basically no chance at this point. A uh, scary move here, having your matchlocks fire into your general. Uh, good move to pull him back now. Uh, don't throw him away in a battle. Should bring him right back here uh, to, to rally the infantry. So let's see where his cavalry is. Uh, his cavalry is actually pretty much gone, so uh, it'll be up to the infantry to win this fight. And actually, the black guy's infantry is doing very well at this point besides the morale, but they shattered. Uh, I'm not sure if the general died. I didn't hear anything. But uh, warrior monks are coming from behind and just... Uh, warrior monks are very scary. They have a war cry that demoralizes the enemy. So you'll see them flashing now. They don't like fighting warrior monks. Nodachis are going to come all the way around the flank, but by the time they get there, the enemy routed. All right. So it looks like JH won this battle very easily, and in truth, he did. So uh, let's review what he kind of did. Uh, since the missile advantage was even on both sides, no one had a clear advantage. Uh, JH was very wise in moving his cavalry up early and uh, neutralizing the bows. I was expecting him to move his bows back, but he didn't. So he was able to hit him and do a, a lot of damage, and from there the bows were able to clean up what was left of the missile units. Uh, the other guy threw away his cavalry, really bad move. Should have conserved him either to hit the flanks or at least just to guard the general. Didn't keep a spear in reserve? Definitely should have kept a spear in reserve to guard the general. With all that cavalry, once the infantry got engaged, uh, engaged he would have had no support for his general. And he didn't. You saw how easy he was uh, cut down. So Jage does a pretty much perfect job with his Naginata Corps. That's how you need to do it. Use the support units well, and then uh, once they're kind of ripped up, your Naginatas can finish the job no problem. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody.